Thank you very much, and everyone can hear me. Yep, great. So thank you for being here. My name is Sang Su, and today I'm going to talk about the uh, think, build, ship, and take your Android open source library. And in these days, I believe that we are using a lot of open source libraries. And this talk is about how to make and release your open source library. I'm currently working for the Spotify as a senior Android engineer, and I have the blog post and then also about the Twitter handle in here. So let's talk about the open source. When you hear about open source, what is in your mind? When I think about open source, the first thing is about the show your work. I mean, your source is really valuable for the other people. Maybe you think that this is a little bit uh, not that great, but actually it is really valuable for everyone. And you know, when you also share the code, our attitude is totally different. I mean, I know that that's going to be used by the other people, so I want to make it shiny or really make a good quality. So that's also helpful for me. And the other thing is that because the source is now the public, other people can learn from your source code. And not only they learn that, they also can point out, oh, you, it seems a little bit long code, so can you fix this one? Or it, they can point that. And not only about pointing, sometimes they also fix that. So they're going to make about the pull request, and then your code is getting better and better. And it is not about just their branch or their repository. They usually make about the upstream or the master. So everything is up to date and then also better. And doing the open source is not only helpful for you. Actually, that's really helpful for the company. That is, I believe, that really good advertising. And you probably heard about that, like the Facebook, the open source library, or the Google, or, I mean, those countries, I mean, those, like, the companies, when you hear that, you think they are the leading the industry. And for me, finally, that is kind of fun things. And Spotify has uh, free open source projects, and there are many. You can check that, to go to the spotify.github.io. And I want to just highlight one thing that is called about the whole framework. Right now, this is only open source for iOS, but uh, will come soon for Android. And this is component and, or the backend driven UI the development or the framework. And let me show you how it works a little bit shortly. And commonly, the backend has only the data. They don't know how to render that. Usually, the rendering part is determined by the client. The main idea is that to return some render type and from the backend. And you can think that this is a really similar concept like the HTML. Like the B tag is about the bold font, or E is about the uh, I is about italic. And the client, like web browser, knows how to render and just render it. In here, I will add the two components. And imagine that the left side is about the backend uh, code. And let's see. And unfortunately, the video seems not working, but uh, the, what I want to show that the left side is about the backend code, and whenever I add something, and the right side is about client. And there is no change about the client code, just like the HTML, just render that. And this is not about uh, the web view, more about just native renderer. So we can just the personalization or a lot of things uh, much easily. So we've talked about open source, and what about the open source library? I believe you heard about Dagger2, Dependent Injection, Picasso, Image Loading Library, RxJava, and OKHttp OK to load about HTTP requests. And Guava is about the common library by the Google, and Auto Value. And there are really more, and I believe you at least heard about the one. And unlike open source, the most beautiful part of the open source library is about this one. You only this about one line, and that's it. And every dependency or every library will be downloaded into your the repository, and you can just use it immediately. And there are two parts of the two kinds of the 
open source library for an Android. The first one is about the Java, and the second one is about the Android library. So let's talk about the Java library first. And I'm going to show you how to build that. Uh, this is my the process line, think and build ship. And let's think. And here is the Spotify chart view. And chart entity has a three status, up, down, and equal. And you can see it, there is a, like the triangle or circle icon. And this, the left side is about the JSON data from the backend. To show the icon from the data, you can imagine this kind of logic. So if that is about up and equals to status, and then show the icon up or down and equals. However, this logic requires about every time there's a string comparison with the equals, and also sometimes there's also can be happen about typo. And what about using the enum? And then code looks like that, and then we don't have to compare strings anymore. So let's try to build this one. So main logic is that we just ignore about case, and it's because that is not that important. So if, even though there is a different case, just to match as a string up or up every the different case as a enum the status up. But there is also like the, some edge cases. One is about how about there is some unknown value. So first strategy can be about throwing some exception. And second can be just return null because it is hard to make or uh, put some value. And there is also another edge case about the dash because dash is not allowed in the enum value. So we maybe need to some kind of conversion to support that. To start, let's make the new project and then click the no activity because we're going to make about the Java library, immediate Java library. And until now, the understood that does not support about the Java library like immediately, so we have to go through this process. And then let's create a new module and then create the Java library. And then I'm going to call that the library as a library, and then I also put some the, the package name. When you check about the settings stack reader, there is a two. One is about app, and the other is about library. The app was created when you create about the project, but that's what we want to use. So let's remove. And when you about to think about Gradle, it says that, oh, this is not used anymore. So do you want to delete? So click the OK, and then you can delete the directory itself because you don't want to use that. And here is the source code about the enum the parser. I'm not going to explain about every code because the focus is more about the how to release your the Android library. Before going to the release step, but I want to highlight about some of the unit tests. So this is about unit tests. And you can see that class is called enum parser, and there is some method called the for class. And it ignores the case, so every different variation is just go to the status up. And the down and equal is the same. If the value is unknown and it returns null by default, and there is another method called like the parse strict, and it will throw an exception if the value is unknown. Lastly, it also supports some variation, so it can cover about dash, which is not uh, supported by the enum. So we have the library, and let's ship it. We are doing the open source library to ship that there are two parts. One is about open source. For now, your code is in your machine, and that's it. And you need to open source first. So how can you do that? I mean, this, kind of, this is really simple things. You just need to push your code in the public place. And there are really many public places, but I believe that uh, GitHub is the most popular one, and it has a really handy like the features something about the release or the code review. And also, it has a nice documentation tool inside. And the really important part is that integration with other tools, such as Slack or the Travis, or et cetera. So you can create a repository in the GitHub, and you can push your source code. Now you made a source, 
and then your code is now in the public place. So, is this open source project? How many people think this is open source project? Great. Actually, not because of the license. Now, by default, it has an exclusive copyright. I mean, you upload it into the public place, but you didn't say that how other people can use that. You need to explicitly say that what others can do with your open the code base. And how to add and which license do you need to use? And there are three popular licenses, and these are things. There are MIT license, Apache 2.0 license, and GPL version 3 license. And left is really weaker one, and right is really stronger one. I mean, there are more, but these are the popular license. And compared to MIT and Apache 2.0, and Apache 2, uh, it allows to use about the pa patent use, but when, whenever you modify the source code, you need to state the, some change. And GPL is a really stronger license, so you need to disclose your the source code, and you also need to use the same license. So if you don't have any like the idea about what you need, you need to use, a LOP guideline is set for the personal project, just use MIT, and that's easy start. And if that is about a little bit more the public use, and you can choose about Apache 2.0. And GitHub supports a really easy way to add a license. You could add it when you create about the repository. So you choose, you can choose about this one. But we already created about the repository. In that case, you can click to create a new file in the GitHub. And when you type the license, there is a button like the choose the license template. And then just choose about either MIT or Apache 2.2 or GPL. And then they're gonna just put every the text when you need. So now we have the license. And this is enough for making the open source project. And imagine that you see about this repository, what you can do. And personally, I probably just skip this repository. Why? Because I can understand what, it, what this is for. And sometimes, or some pe one can say that the code itself could be a really good document, but I strongly believe that the high level document is really helpful to understand the code base. So we need to write the what it is project for and how to use. And the most important part is this open source or what kind of license. And it is really good to mention how can I contribute. If you want to know about how to write uh, this kind of document, there is also a good course in the Udacity. This is sometimes a little bit serious topic, so they made some course. So write the readme parts. And now we have the, doc the document. If the file name is about the readme.md or markdown, and GitHub shows that uh, in right below the, about the source code tree, when people see this repository, they can see that. So I mentioned that how to use that and also about the really important thing, the license. This looks good, but I, can, I think the, this can be much better and used by the continuous integration batches. Sometimes you can push the code without testing or building, test other things. In that case, the master can be broken. And other people can download the, the, the full year the code but they have no idea why this is broken. And with the continuous integration tools, you can show that the master is currently the building successfully or not. And moreover, you can also show that some, I mean, the test coverage. So let's try to add about build state of batch first. So for that, we need to, we need the continuous integration tool. So for example, like the, there's a tool called the Jenkins or Team City, but for the open source project, I think Travis CI is a good enough. And they support really well about the open source project, and you can sign up with the GitHub account. And after that, you can choose the repository you want to enable the continuous integration. And then select the repository, and then go to the repository page. And you can see that this message, because the Travis CI does not know your repository well. They don't know how to, or what they need to do. So 
you need the configuration file. This is the Travis.yaml file, and then you can add that into your repository. And because this is about Java project, what you need to do is only one thing, just one line. This is about the language Java. That's it. And Travis CI understand everything, and it will compile, and it will say that build is passing or not. And that will happen whenever, whenever you will make some code change in your repository. And if you click the, that the batch or build is passing, and you can copy the markdown the image, and then you can add into the, your readme file. Now your the repository is getting shiny and shiny. And let's try one more the batch about task coverage. I believe you are a really great developer. You care about the quality. So of course you added about some the unit tests. So let's try to show about the, your the unit test coverage. And Trevi is a tool for the continuous integration. It checks whether the build is passing or not, but it doesn't track about unit test coverage. So for that, we need another tool called the cover ors. And you can also sign up with the GitHub account. And then same thing, you need to add your repository and just click that. And when you add this repository, that is ready to track your the task coverage. But it only tracks about unit test coverage when it is given. It does not gather that information. So you need to send that information to the cover ors. And for that, we can use about uh, some of the grad third plugins. And one is about the uh, Jakoku, and the other thing is about cover ors the plugin. And Jakoku is going to generate about the uh, state report in the XML format or the HTML. By default, it does not generate by XML, so you can enable that. And then you can add the uh, Travis uh, configuration. So whenever after success, try to run about the unit tasks and then send that information to the coverors. And coverors are now showing that the task coverage. Mine has 100%. That is really unrealistic, but that's really great. And you can also click the status, and then you can also copy the markdown image. And then you can add the batch. Now, my, the repository build is passing, and then code coverage is 100%. If you like literally this kind of batch, there's a lot, and then one is about uh, this is license, also can be a batch. And open source library, I've talked about only about the uh, open source parts, but let's try to say about the open source library part. The goal is to make to your library usable with this kind of one line, that is the goal. To do that, we need to understand what happens when you add about uh, this one. And you can check about uh, your the Gradle file, and there is a J center. So when you add that line, and it checks about uh, this J center to get the, that library. And by default, if that is not found in J center, it goes to Maven center. I'm going to cover that shortly, what is J center and Maven center. And when that is founded, and then it returns about the JAR file, because this is about Java library, and then you can use that. And JCenter is a Maven repository that hosts by the JFlow Pintray, and deliver library through the CDN, and it is the largest Java repository. And I will cover later, but it also supports a really easy way to upload your library into the Maven Center. So after sign up, you can click the add new repository, and then you can type about your the project information. I call that the name is Enum Parser, and then the type is a Maven. I'm gonna explain the Maven shortly later, and then license. And then you can click that import from the GitHub. And then you can click about your the project. This is going to bring about the, your project information from the GitHub to the bin tray. Now you just need to upload your library. Before that, let's talk about a little bit Maven. The Maven is a project management tool and providing a way to help like the building dependencies or the release or distribution. This is a really similar tool to the Gradle. The reason to use about Maven is that it uh, because of the distribution. And it has a really good way to define the library. 
It defines the library at the three parts. One is about the group ID, and the second part is artifact ID, and third part is about version. And to describe that, it also used the POM file, like the project object model file, to describe the project itself. The Maven publish Gradle plugin helps to this process a lot. And after applying this plugin, you can mention that the group ID and version. And after applying this plugin, you can run this uh, task, publish to Maven local. And when you run that, you can also check the what is generated. You can see that there is a jar file about the Java library, and then Pompire about the project description. And if you check about Pompire, there is a group ID, artifact ID, version, and also about depend on this. And I'm currently using about the Guava library for this library. To know that, you can click the, this new version, and then you can tap your version name and the release date. But I highly recommend that don't do that manually, because you already create a library and you already mentioned about the version when you create about the jar file. This is possible, but you need to type again, and it is really weird. And Probably you're going to release about uh, this uh, library many times, so let's try to automate. And of course, there is another Gradle plugin. And Bintray gives about the Bintray plugin. And you can apply the plugin, and then you can add your the usual and API key in the Bintray. And then just run about the Bintray upload. And that's it. And your library will be uploaded into the Bintray. And here is the screen after uploading your library. And is it done? Because we already uploaded the library, but actually this is not done yet. You can use your library because you uploaded your library, but you need to click here, send me URI, and you need to copy this repository URL. And so it looks like that. Why do you need to do that? Because you didn't upload your the library into the J Center yet. Let me explain about a little bit more. So here is your library, and there is the J Center. When you upload your library, you upload it into your the your personal bin tray, not about the J Center. And that's the reason why you need to set up about the Maven repository URL. And Bin tray supports about syncing mechanism about uh, your bin tray and J Center. You can think that J Center is a public place. And to do that, that is really easy. And there is a button called add, add to J Center. And just click that. And they're going to handle everything. So they're going to think about your bin tray and then J Center. And when it, it is linked, and you can see this logo. Since this is released to the J Center now, and then you can search it. That's it. Congratulations, you release your library into the yeah, public place. That is enough. But maybe you also want to try to release your library on up about another the repository called the Maven Center. This is a bit more difficult than other things, I mean the J Center, but I believe that it's really worth to try that. So let's see how and why. And Maven Center is a Maven repository hosted by the Sona type. And Maven Center is more well known because that is started much earlier than the J Center. Because it is kind of old and releasing process tool is kind of not great or fancy. However, they have the really good guideline about what how to release the First thing is that for, to release about JSON, the Maven Center, you need to create an account in the Sonotype. And you need to create a ticket to get the approval about your group ID. So in here, group ID is about io.github.sangsu. And they're going to review that. And eventually, they will send you about this email. So you are approved. And then you can use that uh, group. It is possible to download the to directly to the Maven Center. However, it is much easier to going through the J Center. Uh, we'll explain shortly why that is easier. And Bintray supports about syncing mechanism to J, J Center and, and Maven Center. 
So every after setting about every, every syncing, and when you upload to your domain tray, it'll go to the J center and also Maven center. But let's try to do that manually first. And this is a screen after unloading the, your library. When you go to the Maven Central tab, and then you can see user key and then user password and sync button. When you click the sync, it should work. But you will get a lot of error. And validation failed. And it complains about that uh, you don't have project description, URL, license, or et cetera. That is because Maven Central has uh, some requirements. There are three parts. One is about the source code and then Javadoc artifact should be included. And POM file should have enough information for the project. It should have project name or description or et cetera. And moreover, like Android APK, it should be signed for validation. If you remember what POM file looks like that, and it only has a group ID, artifact ID, and version and dependencies. So let's change that. To add a source code and then Javadoc artifact, you can add the two tasks in here, and everything is defined in the upper level. And to include recurrent information into the POM file, you can add about this line, and you can add about those uh, content. And after changing this uh, build the grader, and then when you learn about the deploy, you can see that the POM file is now that has a lot of information. And oh, finally, you need to sign your artifacts. And you can sign it directly, but the bin tray also supports a really good uh, option. And if, when you go to about the repository and then click here about GPG sign, and it will sign using your the bin tray account. When you click the sync again, and everything works. Because that is now in the Maven Center, you can also search in the Maven Center. But again, don't release manually and use about the Gradle plugin. Because that is about bin tray, and then there is some the task about the Maven Center sync, just add about the username and the password, and then it will automatically unload also the Maven Center whenever you release the library. So one, just one command is enough to release Maven Center and J Center. And having a batch to show that is the latest version uh, linked to the Maven Center is also a really good idea because it can show that what is the latest version. In short, I believe that J Center is, should be good enough to release, but good to follow about the Maven Center requirements. We covered about the Java library. Let's talk about the Android library. And Java library is a JAR file, and an Android library is an AAR file. The main difference is that it can include about a resource file, such as layout, or drawer, and strings, or et cetera. So let's think first. And Spotify client cover art is a Dioton image. Not everything, but most of part is a Dioton image. And Dioton image is about the Hapton Illustrated, made from a single source, and two different colors. If you check about the Meetup application, they use more Dioton images. Let's build a Dioton image library. So same thing, let's try to, try to create about the project. And I will call this library as a Dioton image view, because this is a custom image view supporting the Dioton. And click the no activity. And as I said, we're going to remove about this uh, module. And then create a library module. And then in this case, this is about Android library. And type the library name and the module name. And as I said, there is a two modules in the settings stack reader. And we don't need the app because this is a totally library module. So delete the app and sync. And then delete also the app, the directory. I hope the, someday they're just supporting about this process much easier without this process. And so this is a source code. And again, I'm not going to talk about the source code a lot, I mean, the in detail level. Just this is a custom image view and get the two colors from the XML and then make about the Dioton image. 
And this is XML. I de de define the bus style because I want to the set the value from the XML. And this is about Android manifest. And since this is a library, there's nothing, almost empty. And when the library is released, users can add the Gradle dependency and test it. But it is doable, but it's really good to just add also a sample application in your repository. So let's add a sample code. So again, create a new module. And in this time, uh, phone and then the tablet module because we want to make about the application. And I'm going to call that this is a sample. And then just create an empty activity. And then finally add some the code. And in this sample, I'm loading the same image into the two image views. And you can check that this is about the XML. There are two image views. One is about the normal image view, and below is about the DOTAN image view. And then I also mentioned about the color white and color black, so two colors. If you learn about this application, it looks like that, so it's making about the DOTAN image. So our code is ready to ship. I unloaded into the GitHub like before, and I also added about the document. Because this is about the UR library, that is a really good idea to add about some screenshot. And don't forget to mention about the license. Let's try to add also CI batches for the Android library. Uh, build status is about the, also the Travis CI. And you can just log in and then also enable about the, your the project. And in this time, because this is not about the Java project, it is Android, so you need to set about the language as Android and there is a Java, the JDK and the Android components. You need to mention that. And after that, everything runs smoothly and then you can see build is passing. And you can add the batch in your repository. And test coverage. You can also use the same thing, the coverers. So just enable your the repository in the coverers and set the build upgrader file. The main thing is the same, but uh, in this time, I'm not using the Jacoco. I'm using about Jacoco Android, and I also mentioned about the where is the Jacoco report to test file. And then, almost same thing, after success, call the debug unit test, and then Jacoco test report, and then eventually upload to the coverers. And it works, and then you can check the status in the coverers. Of course, we are the great developer. I mean, that is not required about 100%, but this time, 100%, because this is a really simple application. And show that I'm 100% coverage. The artifact repository relation is totally the same. The main different thing is that they are now returning to about the JAR file. They are returning about the AAR file, because this is about Android library. So you can create about the JCenter, the, the repository. And I'm using the same the plugin, the Maven Publish. But different thing is that I need to mention about the where is the AAR file. When you learn about the publish to Maven local, you can also check about the what is generated. There are now the AAR file and then POM file. And in JCenter, you can import from the GitHub. And then you can select your Android library project. And then you can publish or upload your the library. To do that, don't do manually. There is a plugin called the Mintray. And then just uh, there is information required user and key and package information. And then just learn about the Mintray upload. And your library is also in the Mintray. And you can see that there's the two versions, 0.11 and 0.10. And I already about the link to JCenter, so you can see the icon about JCenter. So now that is in the JCenter. If you search, now that is in JCenter. Again, this should be enough. And then let's try to follow the Maven Central requirements to release that. And if you remember the three things, source and Java artifact and POM file should have the enough information and artifact should be signed. So to include the source and Java.jar, and I added about two lines, 
and each line is from the above task. And the line is a little bit different or the content because the uh, location or Java, or Java dog is a little bit different. And then you can also include about the required information in the form file. And this is totally the same as uh, between Java and Android. To sign the artifact, you can go to the product setting and check box about the GPG sign. And then Pintray is gonna sign up your the library. And to sync automatically, add your the Maven Center and user and password information. You don't have to create another ticket in the Sonata type or the Maven Center because your group ID is already approved. And how to release? There is uh, just one line about the bin, the bin tray umload. And then it goes about your, your bin tray and it sync about the, your, the bin tray and the J Center. And I also think about the J Center and the Maven. So every Maven Center, so everything will be uploaded. And if everything works, you can also search that in the Maven Center. And you can add about the decorate about your repository. So let's wrap it up. I totally, I strongly believe that your code is really valuable. So open your source. Maybe you think that the uh, code is maybe simple. Mine also, less than 100 lines. But it is also valuable for some people, so please open your source code. And don't forget the license, that is a really important part. If you haven't seen any like, the repository like the, there's no license information, you can maybe mention about that or the pull request. And make some nice document because other people maybe cannot understand everything, so high level documents are really helpful and continuous integration, building, and unit testing. And after that, you can release your the library into J Center or Maven Center. And the, you can also tweak your the library if there's some requests in the GitHub, or maybe other people think that, oh, this is better code, so they can make the pull request, and then you can tweak your library. I'm gonna share this slide and there is open source repository I made about two things. One is about Java library in a parser and then Android library about the auto image in view. Thank you very much. <laughs> and is there any questions? Just let me know. Thank you. If you have a question, just call the microphone. Yep. This is not directly related to your uh, uh, um, stuff, but uh, I have a question about legal issues. So do you write those libraries in your free time or during your work time? Are you allowed to, if you write them in your work time, are you allowed to publish them open source? Mm-hmm. Uh, in Spotify, like the we are to doing some kind of modularization. So eventually every library is uh, in a separate module. Mm -hmm. So we are doing the in the work time. Okay, so there's no problem with that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs>